Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So this is my 30 day review of the new DJI Air 3. Now it has been out for more than 30 days now, but I was a little bit delayed getting one just for logistic reasons. I've been on the road all summer traveling, so it was a little difficult to get one to me. In fact, I'm filming this review in Newfoundland right now. I've been here for the last three weeks and most of the footage that I'm going to be showing in this review is filmed right here in Newfoundland. It's an incredible island. I highly recommend visiting, adding it to your bucket list if you ever get the chance. So personally, I think the Air 3 is going to be the perfect choice for many people, especially those who maybe perhaps want to step up from something like the Mini 3. They want more features, some more power. This is going to be a nice choice if they don't want to go right to something like the Mavic 3 series. It'll be a little more affordable and you're going to get a pretty comparable drone when it comes to specs, speed and performance. Of course, you're not going to have that nice Hasselblad camera, but the cameras on the Air 3 are pretty incredible and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about them as we go along. The Air 3 is the first in the Air series to offer a dual camera system. Of course, we have that nice wide angle camera but it also has a three times tele camera. And that's really nice for those who want to get a little creative. Of course, you're going to get that nice compression, bring in the background, but it also allows you to have a nice fixed optical camera that you're not going to lose quality by zooming in digitally. And it allows you to get closer into the action if you need to film something, but you can't get in close enough. Now, like many people, when some of the specs of the Air 3 started leaking, I was a little disappointed to find out that we were losing our one inch sensor. Both the cameras on the Air 3 have a one over 1.3 inch sensor. So it's a little bit smaller than one inch. Now all that disappointment quickly faded once I started examining the footage that I was capturing. You have to keep in mind that sensor size is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to quality video and photos. And DJI has done something pretty incredible with the Air 3. Now I don't own my Air 2S so I can't do any side-by-side -side comparisons. There are a lot of videos out there already doing side-by-sides. And for the most part, every image that you'll see every video that you see. The content captured on the Air 3, even though it's a smaller sensor, looks quite a bit better. Nice crisp images and beautiful natural color. And that's one nice thing that they did with the Air 3 is that both cameras are identical. You can shoot in D-Log M on both cameras. So when you're doing your color grading, everything is gonna match nicely. And that translates also into the intelligent flight features. If you wanna create master shots or use point of interest or tracking, you can do so on either camera, both function identically. So you're not limited to choosing a specific camera if you have to do something like tracking or a point of interest. You can use the camera that's most appropriate for the situation and you can get really creative. Again, that compression when doing a master shot or a point of interest can look really, really nice. Now with that 1X camera, you're able to zoom in digitally to three times and with the three times camera, you can zoom in digitally nine times. Now keep in mind that is digital, so if you are zooming in digitally, you are gonna lose some quality, but it is nice that you are able to get in a little bit closer if the situation needs it. Now the camera can tilt upwards 60 degrees, so that's the same as the Mini 3 Pro, and that's more than the Mavic 3 Pro. The Mavic 3 Pro only tilts up to 35 degrees. Now that's not a feature you're gonna use all the time. Most of the time you're gonna have the gimbal pointing down, but it is definitely nice in some situations. Now with the launch of the Air 3, we got two new controllers. We got the RCN2 and the new DJI RC2. Of course, the Air 3 is equipped with OcuSync 4. So that's gonna give you a good range. It's rated for 20 kilometers. Now, of course, you're never gonna reach that 20 kilometers. You'll probably be limited by the battery before you get that far. But that OcuSync 4 is gonna give you a nice solid connection, even in complex environments. When flying in a city with a lot of Wi-Fi interference, or you've got a lot of obstacles, trees, different things like that, you're gonna have a nice strong connection, which is very important. I haven't done any range tests with mine, but I have had it out quite a distance and I've been very pleased with the connection. Now, when it comes to the RC2, it's very similar to the original DJI RC. Of course, we have some fold out antennas and I'm not 100% certain, but it seems to be a little bit more responsive. I don't know if it has the same processor inside, but it seems to function a little bit better when using some of the intelligent flight features. There's not as much lag as the original DJI RC. The overall experience of it is quite nice. I'm really hoping they make it backward compatible with some of the other drones. Now, unlike the Mini 3, the Air 3 does not support true vertical shooting. With the Mini 3 Pro, the camera turns on its axis, 
allowing you to capture vertical video for things like social media. But what the Air 3 does is it darkens the side of the image so it helps you line up the shot and it's actually a little more safe because you can still see what's around it. When you're using that feature, the final video that is saved to the memory card is already cropped for you. Now it is in a max resolution of 2.7K, but for social media that's more than adequate if you're gonna be uploading to a place like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or Instagram Reels. So it is a nice feature, and again, not everybody uses that, but it is nice that it is included. Now, one of my favorite features of the Air 3, and it's a very simple one, but that is that it's now rechargeable by USB-C. Now, the reason I like that is that every drone in my fleet now can be recharged with the same charger. I don't have to bring a big, bulky charger, like the one that comes with the Air 2S. It's just a nice, simple USB-C interface. On top of that, it allows you to recharge it with a power delivery power bank. A couple other nice features of the Air 3 is the fact that when DJI released it, it now supports cruise control and waypoint missions. Now, again, those aren't features that everybody use, but myself, I use the cruise control quite a bit. You can do some really creative things with it. And the waypoint missions are nice. Again, I don't do a lot of waypoint missions, but there are some times that I do like to create one. So it is nice that it is included with the Air 3. Of course, it is rated for 46 minutes of flight time. Now you're never gonna get that, but I've been able to average anywhere from 38 to 41 minutes, depending on how I'm flying. So lots of flight time, which is another nice feature compared to the Air 2S. And the charger that they include this year is similar to that of the Mini 3 Pro. You can use it as a power bank, but it also has a nice feature, a consolidation feature, where you can move all the power from some empty batteries into one. I've actually used that a few times now, and it's allowed me to get up and get an extra flight in. That's a really great feature, and I would love to see them add that to all drones in the future. Now, I like to try and keep my reviews balanced, talk about the good and the bad, but really there's nothing bad you can say about the Air 3. It's an incredible piece of tech. The only thing I would have liked to have seen different is the amount of internal memory. The Air 3 comes with eight gigabytes of internal storage, which is really kind of useless in today's with 4K video. If you're just taking photos or filming in 1080, you know, you can get some, uh, a good amount of stuff stored on that. But in 4K, you know, you're gonna be getting less than like five minutes worth of video. I would have liked to have seen at least 64 gigabytes, if not 128. Hopefully in the future and future versions, DJI will up that. Well, folks, that's basically my 30 day review of the DJI Air 3. It's a fantastic piece of tech. I've enjoyed flying it. In fact, I've enjoyed it so much, I have been considering selling my Mavic 3. I love my Mavic 3, but I think the Air 3 will meet most of my needs. The wide angle and the three times tele on the Air 3 is probably more than enough for what I need. So if you have been thinking of upgrading to the Air 3 from something like the Mini 3 Pro because you want a little more power, a few more features, I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic drone. And really, what else would you expect? Every drone DJI releases is pretty incredible. The lineup that DJI has right now, the Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic 3 Series, the Air 3, the DJI Avada, DJI is really on top of their game. Well, folks, I want to thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and enjoyed some of the footage that I shared. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments what you think of the Air 3. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.